Now it's time for proofs. I love these, these are so much fun. So why should you care about proofs? Well, basically this is how we know that numbers work. It's actually really cool. We're gonna show that things are true. Now I like this memory here, man, that math test was really hard. And a friend is like, yeah, the backside especially. Uh-oh, obviously you didn't do the back. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you. It happened to me in high school before. Uh, okay, so I was inspired by watching some uh, sort of magic shows and things. You know, there's, there's often these people say, I can, I can guess what's in your mind. And it's often some different variation of something like this. So it's like, think of any number. I actually found this one right here. Uh, someone was trying to do this for kids. I was like, you know what? This is awesome. I could totally use this. So think of any number. And actually, how about you try this right now? So I want you to think of a number. It works for any number, but just try between 1 and 10 just to keep it easier, okay? So think of a number right now between 1 and 10. Okay. Now multiply that number by 2. Now add 6 to that answer. Okay. So you had your number. You multiplied it by 2. You added 6. Now divide that answer by 2. Okay. So your final answer so far now, you divide it by 2. Then subtract from that your original number. Okay? If you're left over, I have such magical powers, I can guess the answer. Your answer is three. Now, ooh, do I have any magical abilities? Of course not. But I, mean, I just want to show you, you could have done it with any number. Right? I just want to show you, so this is sort of a nice intro to proofs, I think. Let's say I picked the number 12, let's just say. Well, if I multiplied that by two, let's say, so times two, what would I get? I would get 24. Okay, then I would add 6. I'll just do this. So add 6, that would give me 30. Then I'm supposed to divide by 2. Okay, that would give me 15. Then I have to subtract from that 12. If I do that, I get 3. Ooh. And of course, if I did, I don't know, let's say 5. Let's just say I pick 5. All right, 5 times 2 would give me 10. Add 6 would give me 16. Divide that by 2, I would get 8. Uh, if I subtract from that the original, which is minus 5, I get 3. Now, why is that? See, I'm going to introduce you to this by actually doing a deductive proof. This is part of what we need to do in proofs. So to do a deductive proof, um, I'm going to do something generic. I'm going to say let n uh, yeah, be any integer. Let's just say we'll do integers. That's nice and simple, okay? So let n be any integer number. An integer number is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It can be negative, but let's just keep positive integers for right now. Okay, so let n be any integer. Then let's actually do this then. So let's do this, uh, these steps. So let's do times 2. We'll do the plus 6. We'll do the divide by 2, and we'll do the minus n. Okay, so we'll start off with n. So start off with n. Well, then what do I get now? If I do uh, times 2, I don't mean squared, I just mean times 2. Whoops, I don't think it's super clear. Almost looks like it's x squared. So times 2 is what I mean. So if I do times 2, I have 2n now. See that? If I want to do plus 6, well then I have 2n plus 6. All right. If I divide by 2, I can divide them both by 2, by the way. 2n over 2 just gives me n, and 6 over 2 gives me 3. So if I take this now and I subtract from it n, n plus 3 minus n just gives me 3. I have proven this. I've shown that you always get 3. You could actually even write QED when you're done, which is, I think it's Latin for quadrat demonstratum. It means like I've shown this to you. So it's like I'm done. Like da 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 da. So you see, it didn't matter what you picked. It's not magic, it's just math. Um, so how do we do a deductive proof? Well, to prove a mathematical statement, there's a couple ways of doing it. You can show that the left-hand side, I'm going to write LHS for short, you can show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. I'll show you those later. Or you can just do some, un, you know, you can undergo some generic or general algebraic processes to prove it. That's what I just did in this magic trick example. Right here I did like a formal sort of deductive proof here. So when we're doing this, when we've shown an identity or that a statement is true, there's a, there's a few ways of... of you know, notation that we can use. One of them we could say, you know, oh, so left hand side to watch, we use three equal signs. It's like it's it's an identity, it means this is the same. We could say uh, quad era demonstratum. There's a few ways of saying it, right? But we often use this three equal signs like this. 
So what do I mean by left and right hand side? I mean that like, well, we'll see an example in a second. Watch, I'm going to show you one of these. We're going to do a left hand side and right hand side version here. So I'm actually going to split this question into a left hand side and a right hand side. And the rule is here, normally when you do algebra and you do math, you can move things from one end to the other. But here I do not want to do that. We're not moving things from one side to the other. The idea here when you're doing a proof is to just stick with one side and try to get that one side at any point to be equal to that right side, then you're done. Technically, I guess you could actually manipulate both sides. You could work on the left and work on the right. As long as you do correct statements, as long as you get them equal, you know, you can say, aha, left hand side equals right hand side. Therefore, I'm done. Okay, that'll be the idea. Let's see if we can do this. So I'm just saying, do not move something from one side to the other. Then you're just doing algebra. You're not doing a proof. So instead, manipulate things until they're equal. So let's actually try to do this one proof that I just showed you. So show that x squared, uh, x plus 2 squared minus 5 equals this mess. Let's just start it. Let's see what happens. So if I do left-hand side and right-hand side, uh, let me try to do this. So let me first try to actually expand this. Remember, I have to write it out twice. Don't forget about the minus 5 here. On the right-hand side, I'll just leave it and just hope that we get that. Right? So the right-hand side is just this. Let's see what happens here. I multiply the first times the first, I get x squared. Outside, x times 2 is 2x. Inside is 2 times x, which is 2x. Last is 4, because that's 2 times 2. Don't forget the minus 5. So I'll group these together. You gotta do this in a different color here. I'll group them together. So then I end up with, let's see, I end up with x squared. Uh, plus 2x plus 2x, which is 4x. Now 4 minus 5 is minus 1. Do you notice now that I have the left side equals the right side? I'm done. See, I've done a deductive proof. My left-hand side equals the right-hand side. I'm finished. We can do some other ones. I mean, the IB, uh, by the way, I love this one. Have you seen this dog? I have now. I don't know why this one just makes me laugh. The IB actually gave us an example like this right here to do uh, in the uh, syllabus. So a lot of textbooks and people actually have taken a look at a lot of the textbooks and different people making resources. Everyone's using this stupid example. It's fine, I guess, but my goal is going to be give you a lot more examples. You're going to see in other videos here in the next video after this one, I'm going to show you a ton of different examples. I want to train you really well so you know how to do all these, not just this one example. I figured I'll show it to you, though. So All right, so show that 1 fourth equals 1 fifth plus 1 twentieth. All right, let me do a left-hand side and right-hand side again. So I'll start it off, left-hand side, right-hand side. Let's actually do them separately. So our left-hand side, I've just got one-fourth. I'm, I guess, just going to leave it. Let me do the right-hand side and see what I get. So if I have one-fourth here and on my right-hand side, let's see, I've got to get these two things as a common denominator. So I'm going to get them both over 20. That'll work. So I've got 1 over 20. 5 times what gives me 20? Well, 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. Okay. What does that give me? Well, 4 over 20 plus 1 over 20 gives me 5 over 20. What does 5 over 20 give me? They both divide by 5. I end up with uh, 5 divided over 5 is 1. 20 over 5 is 4. And hey, hold on. Look at this. Left-hand side equals right-hand side. See that? The left-hand side equals... So I give it this super equals, right? This three equal signs here. He goes right hand side. I'm done. Now they say, hence, prove that this. Normally it'll be like hence or otherwise. Basically try to prove this identity. And hopefully it's going to be something similar. So let's see if I can manipulate the left hand side or the right hand side so that the two are the same. Well, the left hand side looks like I should probably just finish with that. I don't see how I'm going to do that and get this, but I can maybe see it where I can start with this and get that. So let's see here. Uh, maybe I'll do it in purple here. So I want all this big mess. Now it looks a little bit tough. Let's maybe just work on this, um, this second one here. Do You see I can take out a factor of a, so I have a times a plus one. Can you see that? I just took that out because mm, that's the same. It has to be the same thing. But do you notice now I can get a common denominator? If I make them both, this may not be that familiar to you, but it's a good practice to do. If I make them both, a over a plus 1, that'll work. I can get both of them to equal that. 
So a plus 1 times what gives me a times a plus 1? Well, I have to multiply by a. That means I multiply the top by a. Notice because these would cancel out, I get the same thing. This one I don't have to do anything with, I'm just done. Okay, let's keep going then. That means this right here then will be a plus 1 over, because I just now can add them, over a times a plus 1. And good news, look what I can do now. I have the a plus 1's cancelling out, and what do I end up with? I end up with 1 over a. And hey, lo and behold, I have left hand side equals right hand side, so I can write that down, right? So left hand side, super equals, and this means it's identity, right? This is how we can do these. In the next video I'm going to show you much more. I'm going to try to train you much, much better for exams.